Welcome back to a March podcast at Lady with the Knit channel. My name is Dominika and uh, hi to the new subscribers as I have seen a little grow in the number uh, which makes me very happy to see that the followers are growing and uh, more people are finding my channel. So it's Friday, um, I finished work now it's about six o'clock so apologies it might get darker as i film it but i didn't want to risk of moving the filming into the weekend because as you all know and i know life happens sometimes and um, you do your weekly shopping you walk the dog you make a lunch or dinner you start cleaning the house and suddenly there's no time to film a video so I'm not making this mistake again, because I've, I've done that last weekend. I was planning to film this video last weekend, it did not happen. And I said, right, I finished work, I got ready, I'm gonna sit down and film the video. Today's coffee is from a new mug, uh, which is handmade by my mom. So um, over the Easter um, I went to see her and I always love going to my mom's house and going into her studio because I can always find a new mug for me to have my coffee in. So obviously this was pink, it was a winner. <laughs> I grabbed it and now I'm drinking my coffee. Um, it's a perfect size, it perfectly fits my um, cappuccino because I don't like uh, coffee with a lot of milk and a massive, you know, tall, long coffee. So this does a trick. It's small, it's little, it's pink. And for some reason, coffee tastes better in a mug which has been handmade by my mom. So a sip of coffee and let's jump right in to my finish for this month. I feel like I'm very bouncy, but maybe the reason for that is that this is actually my third coffee of the day and I'm a bit high on caffeine. So, finish for uh, the month of March, unfortunately only one, which is the socks. Um, if I was not taking part in a sock knitting challenge for this month, I wouldn't have a finish. So, to be perfectly honest, because of these socks, at least I have one finished for sure every month to show you. So a uh, month of March, uh, we obviously had Easter mm, So my March socks Definitely have to be dedicated for Easter. I still have my Easter decoration because I, I just It looks so cute that I can't put it away for some reason. So it might be here by summer God knows, but I just love it. So March socks um, I showed you, I think last month, that um, I was making these from Drops Nord and I can tell you that uh, knitting color work out of Drops Nord, it's so much easier than trying to do it with a simple hand-dyed fingering yarn because that is just very thin and it doesn't look as beautiful as my color work looks for this month. Obviously, it might be to do with the case that I'm actually improving, but I love it. My little um, chickens. Um, original uh, pattern by Stone Knit had a um, French heel, or how else you call it, God knows. But the challenge for March told us to do this heel, so I, I kind of had to change the heel. And... Um, Obviously we've got egg, which I think is such a clever design to... <laughs> it seems so simple, yet so genius. And I don't think I would be actually able to come with that myself. It's an egg. How pretty is that? It's got a few lines of um, pearl stitches. And then obviously 
the bottom part is just simple stockinette and I love these I love these so much and my whole family was already arguing of who's going to get these socks at the end of the year because I said this year for Christmas everyone is getting socks because I'm gonna have so many of them I'm gonna have 12 pairs I don't know if I mentioned it before but I have never in my life worn handmade socks don't know why for some reason I always gift socks I don't put them on myself so I said that uh, once I have all the 12 um, socks finished I'll take a few Instagram posts show it on here and then everyone can choose the socks that they want and I will know that people will be enjoying wearing them so I think these will be one of the top ones that everyone will try to steal so maybe I will need to either choose who to give it who to give this to or maybe do a bit of a lottery to win the chicken socks but I absolutely love these I love them so much that um, I could actually make mm, a few more pairs because they are stunning if you don't have chicken socks you need ones in your life so yeah so much fun to, to uh, make them I think it was about 12 or 14 rows of color work nothing too crazy um, the yoke part I think it only had about four rows where you had to knit with white and blue the rest was pretty normal you make you you knit with white then you change it to the yellow super easy super fun I love these so much this is my only finish for March uh, my ongoing projects are nothing new really so I'm just quickly going to show you them because um, I have talked more about them last month and um, nothing really changed um, my mobby got um, put in around and I've got this much of the body I think it's only a few centimeters away from actually starting the ribbing and then I'm going to only have to do the sleeves and I think um, the edging for the neckline and it's going to be finished obviously now we're approaching um, spring summer warmer weather so all my knits like that I'm not really going to finish and get to wear them straight away so I'm not really rushing with them um, I had a plan to knit on it a little bit more um, and when I finally picked it again I discovered that my the sparkly yarn finished here we go I don't know why but for some reason I was thinking that this will last me the whole jumper and I only had one and I was thinking well this is going to last me the whole project that's why I took to make like I took this to actually put it next to drops air and knit with it when I picked this jumper back again and I pulled this yarn out of the bag I was like it's I'm running low and the same evening it finished so unexpected buy I was forced to buy this <laughs> Stellaris, uh, the color is 101, it's the sparkly yarn in the color of white, this time I have taken two because I just didn't want to risk it happening again and um, I didn't want to pay for shipping once again in case I run out of it again so now I'm sure that these two will definitely be enough and I will be able to finish my mobby um, I don't know why I thought that this is going to last me the whole jumper it's 560 meters in 25 grams so I should have realized it's not gonna be enough but for some reason I didn't it happens it happens I bought two more so I will be finally able to finish at least the body part of um, 
of this jumper. It's really fun to make it. I like knitting it. Um, it looks like there's a lot of things going on, but actually once you get a hang of it, it goes pretty easy and um, it's quite easy and enjoyable knit to make. And I've actually realized that I do really like drops ear and the jumper I wore last month, um, which was a free pattern of drops, I love it so much. It's so nice to wear it. It's so soft. Mm, I really don't have anything to say bad about the yarn itself. So I'm very happy that I chose um, this for my Moby. And I'm sure the jumper will be loved so much. So this is that. I can tell that it's slowly getting darker. So sorry if the color change. What's next? Um, I have brought my um, work project back because I was kind of feeling like I'm going to be filming this video and I wanted to show it to you. And I'm not too sure if it's actually going to be going back to work with me because it's almost at the finish line. So I might just finish it at home and leave it. Now I have made a good progress with this and I feel like it's a very clever way to get your, for me at least, um, to get my uh, project going is to actually take one of it at work and make it completely work project. Um, I can't knit while I'm working and everyone keeps saying, how do you manage to knit at work? I am the person who uses public transport to get to work. So obviously I can't choose the time I'm leaving. I have to kind of go with the way what the time, go with the time the bus comes. So I'm always at least 10 minutes earlier before the start of my shift. So almost all the time I have at least 10 minutes where I can knit a row um, before my shift. And I've got 30 minute lunch. And um, actually knitting, I've noticed, has now stopped me from wandering into town and spending money unnecessarily. So I can just spend my 30 minutes lunchtime knitting. And it kind of relaxes me. I can satisfy my craving of knitting. It makes me feel better and the project gets finished. So, here we go. I've got the body part finished. We've got the rib. It's got a twisted rib. It's got a little side like that. And yesterday, after taking it back, I put in the, the neckband, the collar. Which is, I think, turned out very pretty, and I think, and I think it looks so much better with the collar. It's a double, double, fo like a folded hem, so um, three meters, three meters. I wish three centimeters. A row of purl stitches, then three centimeters. You fold it over and you knit it together. So this is what I've done. For some reason I can never do it nicely uh, where I start it and where it finishes and I always for some reason end up with a little hole. I've noticed I do it all the time. It looks good. Nobody sees it. So who cares? Um, the neckband itself is quite tight. It might be to do with the number of stitches um, or the fact that it's double or maybe I've I've tried to bind it off loosely. Um, I don't think it's the actual um, binding that is the issue. I think it's just the way it is. Um, it's meant to be quite high color. So um, if I was to wear it, I would definitely put it on before doing my makeup. Because I feel like if I did my makeup before and then put that on, I would almost certainly turn out with a foundation on the collar. <laughs> so um, the only thing that this needs is obviously I-cord edge for the armholes and I hate it. I absolutely hate this top. Um, maybe it's me, maybe it's the pattern. 
Um, I figured out that if I don't like something while I'm making it, very rarely I actually love it once it's finished. It just that trick doesn't happen with me. Um, but I'm quite stubborn and I like to finish my knits. So um, I either finish like I rather finish it and hate it, or give it away, than have the project sitting unfinished. Um, you know, ripping it all out, I will definitely not use the yarn again. I don't like knitting with the yarn that has been previously used. <sighs> the reason why I don't like this, it's very easy. Um, it's a beautiful top. The only problem I'm having is that it has very wide sleeves. Um, when I put it on, about this much of my bra actually shows and I'm not a fan of it. I could try to I could try to obviously maybe do something and like knit a bit of German rose just to increase this part. I could do that. But do I want to do it? No. So I'm going to put in the eye cord edge. I'm going to try it on. Um, the original idea was obviously to wear this under a blazer and if you wear it under a blazer no one can actually see the sides because you're wearing something on top but then I was thinking if you do get warm or you get hot and you want to remove your blazer like I would not be removing my blazer knowing that people could see my bra side so Maybe I'll give it to my sister if she likes it and if it doesn't bother her. And if that, if she doesn't like it, then I have an idea that this will actually be for my mannequin. And I will just put it on my mannequin and have it there. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is definitely getting finished. And um, whether I'm going to wear it, we'll see. But... That's the progress. I think I've done quite well because this mainly was knit at work. Um, I think just the top part was done at home while I was on holiday. The rest, all of it was done at work. So it's quite nice. Um, now the yarn that I'm using, it's uh, Sannes Garn Dua. Once again, I'm not a fan of this yarn. I think it's to do with the fact that it has cotton. It's soft, yes, um, but it has a tendency to split. And um, I try, I try to be quite gentle with my knits. But you know, life happens. Sometimes you pull it out, or you you need a stitch mark, or you need something in your bag. Um, I've noticed that this yarn tends to either catch on my ring. And on my nail sometimes and one or two strands pull out and then it bothers me and uh, that had happened a few times and when I was filming my Lithuanian video I wanted to show you um, I wanted to show them and I couldn't find it but now I have I mean this is me just being very OCD and being very picky But, I don't know how to show that to you. Here we go. This is what happens. This is after me trying to pull it in. And I don't like it. But maybe that's just me being super picky, super OCD. I don't know. I don't like cotton in my knits. I think that's the reason. Um, I started on the bad foot with this project and it doesn't seem to leave me. The love just did, like the chemistry, the love did not happen. So I just want to finish it and get it out from my um, whips. Mm. Sanya's Garn Dua is actually getting quite popular. Um, between Lithuanian Instagrammers, the knitting side of Instagrammers, I must say, and um, it's getting praised a lot. 
Now, I personally bought this yarn when it was on sale, so I don't really feel like I've been ripped off. It was still, I think, 650 per 50 grams, so it's still quite a pricey one, but I think it will, if it wouldn't have been on sale, I wouldn't have even tried it. And now after trying it, I don't think I would be buying it again. So that's kind of my story with my work project. Now, um, I've got this progress that I briefly mentioned last month. Um, it's a jumper for my mom, which she found in a um, Lane Contrast book. It's called Solina. And um, I don't know if I... Sh I might have shown you last month, but I'm making it out of Knitting for Olive yarn. Um, so it's Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair. And the color Soft Rose. I love the color. I love pink, pastel. The yarn is very soft, beautiful. It's very pricey. Mm. I think it's a part of this price is the marketing and the actual brand um, Knitting for Olive. Because I would say Tilia by Phil Colana Mohair is way more softer than this is. Um, merino is soft, I'll give them that. Um, now, for my mom's uh, jumper, this has costed me, with shipping, I believe roughly 150 pounds. And I'm almost certain that I don't have enough and I will need to buy more, so the price of this jumper will grow. So. I pray to all knitting gods that she does not put this in a washing machine to wash it because that has previously happened with a cashmere socks that I made for her and I hope it doesn't happen with this jumper because I will definitely not want to knit her another one. So I'll show you the jumper quite wide one obviously the whole pattern this the front yoke it will straighten out and look so much better after I wash it but here we go I have separated for the sleeves I'm making the body part now and um, I hope to finish this by the next bank holiday that we have because Sunday before our next bank holiday is Mother's Day in Lithuania. So, fingers crossed I can finish this jumper and give it to her as a gift. Um, just to give her something to kind of honor the mother, um, the mother's, like the Lithuanian Mother's Day. Um, we have lived in UK for so long, so obviously we tend to celebrate English Mother's Day with mo with our mom but I still feel like it's a nice gesture um, to um, celebrate Lithuanians one as well. Um, I don't think there is too many days to actually appreciate your mom and to celebrate Mother's Day so um, if I can do it twice a year I'll do it twice a year. So the plan is to finish this. Obviously this jumper is getting prioritized over all of my progresses and um, I really hope to finish it which is slightly making me nervous knowing that I'll probably don't have enough yarn so I'm trying to kind of knit what I have and then once I'm at the sleeves kind of I can figure out and probably order more yarn so um, I don't have to go a day without having this yarn and, and knitting it pretty much so uh, my mom has tried it on Easter before I separated for the sleeves because the yarn is so expensive it has taken me so long to actually start it I was a bit hesitant um, because I did not fit the gouge um, I've done the collar three times because I was scared my mom is not gonna fit her head in it um, first I've done so I've, I've made it with the 3.5 um, needles so 
this one uses Italian cast on so first I tried making it with um, 2.5 uh, first couple of rounds and then changing it so the, the actual front the beginning is not as um, stretchy and the the stitches actually do look so much nicer if you cast on with a smaller size and then you you kind of change it to the biggest needle size afterwards so I've done that and um, I got, like, I chickened out, I ripped it out and I said I didn't want to risk her not fitting in her head. Um, then I tried it again, I didn't like it. Third time was lucky. And I was thinking, you know what, if I don't start knitting it, I will just be, like, going, starting it and starting it off and then ripping it out, starting it again. So, um, for me personally, this could be slightly more fitted. But my mum wanted um, 20 centimeters of a positive ease, um, which I think we're slightly under 20 centimeters positive ease, but it's not super fitted. So um, I think she's going to like it. Uh, personally, for myself, if I was knitting it for myself, I would make it way more fitted before you separate for the sleeves. So the actual yoke part, I would make it not to have so much of a positive ease I would kind of make it skin tight because I think the pattern looks so much nicer if it stretches out but obviously good old washing blocking does the trick and I'm sure my mom will love it so when I started thinking about casting this project on the pattern called can't, I can't proper, properly remember it now, but it called for three centimeter and three and a half centimeter needle, uh, millimeter needles. So the knitting needles that I had out through my projects were my chow goose, which the three millimeter needles was already in use, I believe, by my work project. I hired I did not have a three millimeter needles so I went ahead and ordered myself three millimeter needles now I then got asked I've got so many knitting needles sets that was it really necessary for me to buy higher higher three three millimeter needles It was kind of an excuse for me to buy it. Um, three millimeter needles are quite... I use them quite a lot and I like the sharpness of higher higher so much that I personally just decided that because of all this lace I will need sharp needles so I bought it. But after that I actually went and digged out all of my knitting needles and I was... Um, drawn to my scenic needles and I opened it to look for a three just to check if a three millimeter needles actually are in this set and I was surprised not in a good way so two of the size uh, two of the sizes I have this noticed that it has discolored oxidized whatever that happened rusted hope you can see that so I got in contact with uh, seen it the manufacturer and I said well the thing is that nothing else uh, other sizes are completely fine so this was the reason why I thought that if all these sizes are fine why are these not fine why are these getting rusty and i must say i was a bit drawn back by the customer service um they emailed me back <laughs> to say that um, i should clean them with a wd-40 i think that's the spray name 
um, but I should be very careful not to touch the bamboo part um, and if um, the VD40 gets in contact with the bamboo I should immediately wipe it off um, but I should first of all try to avoid any contact with a, um, a bamboo so obviously I'm not sure how I would have to clean this when it's right on the edge without touching the bamboo and I was then also thinking well if I touch it if bamboo might react to it then I would kind of be at fault for touching the bamboo with WD-40 so I was not happy with the response then I've sent them a picture well I've sent them an email, email back attached the picture and uh, the reply then again I've got from them saying that WD-40 might be not strong enough at this point anymore and I should use some stronger chemical to remove the, the dust not the dust, the rust it's they meant to be luxury needles um, I don't feel like I've done anything wrong store them in any other way than the rest of the of the set I mean, if you ever had to communicate with Chao Gu, um, customer service, even if you were at fault, um, they would take a whole lot of responsibility to make you happy as a customer, to replace it without a charge for you, because they value us at the end of the day. Um, this is a luxury item when it comes to knitting. No one needs 150 pounds um, knitting needles. To knit with you can literally knit with the cheapest you know needles you can find this was the gift that my mom gave me she's obsessed with Japan and as soon as she heard that you know there is stuff like Japanese needles bamboo needles um, I think this is a luxury set as well they used to call it um, yeah so I was a bit disappointed with their customer service to say the least um, but I have also messaged Hobby, um, so this was actually purchased at Hobby, and they were brilliant. So I have got a replacement. I didn't have to pay anything, I didn't have to pay for postage, nothing. I literally placed an order with the code they gave me, um, didn't pay a single penny, and these came in a post maybe four days later five days um, that's counting bank holiday in between so four or five working days which um, I believe they post their stock from Denmark so that's extremely quick I would say and uh, yeah so a separate thank you to Hobby for actually taking taking the responsibility and uh, making me as a customer happy they have actually stopped selling CNET in their website. They have discontinued it and you can no longer buy CNET. So um, this is a 5.5 inch needle tips. Um, I think the other ones, the shorter ones, were even cheaper. They were on a discount. These were not um, and they didn't have the largest needle size, the 10 millimeter ones. So um, I replaced the 8mm ones and uh, to replace my 10mm ones that I will be chucking in the bin I have purchased 6.5 um, because the actual set doesn't have 6.5 it has a 6 and then immediately jumps to 7 um, so 6.5 I'm more likely to knit with than a 10mm one so I'm not upset but yeah, so that's kind of my story with the CNIT, their customer service. And um, I think once again, I was actually proven that you can't beat Chagu needles. I don't think there are better needles than a Chagu ones. Um, even though I must say, higher, higher are bang on with their sharp tips. Mm, I love their tips. I don't have anything bad to say about a tip for higher higher. I enjoy them so much and I'm actually making my mom's jumper with higher higher needles. 
The only reason why Chao Gu still wins over Haya Haya is because of the Accords. And I think that Haya Haya should spend some more money in fixing their Accords. Even though I heard some of the color um, are actually not not as bad, they better, but I can't remember which ones they are. Um, my one is a green one, so it might be a, a blue one that is better. Um, if you know which cord is better for higher, higher, let me know, and I'll actually order it because the actual cord it's not the greatest for higher, higher, but the tips are lovely, and um, yeah, ciao, gu winning with their cords, they winning with their tips. Chao um, Gu were my first set I ever had. There's no discoloration, there's no um, markings. They look like brand new and the customer service are mwah, chef's kiss. So that's my story with the Cnit. Um, I don't know if you had any experience with them. Sorry if the light keeps changing, um, it is getting dark outside and I'm, I'm gonna try to finish this video as soon as I can and um, before the colors get all weird. Yeah, but to actually say I was not expecting them to replace the whole set, um, I wasn't actually even thinking that they would replace it for me. I would have actually loved an email that where they have accepted that something's gone wrong, that they would have apologized, but not all the businesses are the same and um, Hobby were brilliant, they sorted it all out for me. Now two uh, last projects, obviously one of it is my temperature blanket and the temperature blanket is going great, we've got three months. March is all in, finished. What I do with my temperature blanket after I finish a month, I give it a bit of a steam and it makes it look so much better to actually compare it. This is ironed, this is just crocheted. It has actually stopped here because I have run out of one of the colors and um, I'm waiting for Drops to put their merino wool on sale. Um, so naive me thinks that maybe by any chance, once Drops cotton sale runs out, uh, maybe they will put merino back on sale because I actually need some merino wool from Drops. Um, and because I don't want to pay for postage twice, I'm kind of putting off buying cotton that I need for for this temperature blanket and I was kind of thinking I will kind of scrape by but I did actually run out of one of the colors completely and two other colors are running very very short on so I need to buy three of these colors and I'll probably buy about two or three skeins of the cream color um, so if you're wondering where I live, the most, um, the temperature that we had the most was 12 to, 3, 12 to 13 degrees. That was the color that has finished first. So obviously nothing really surprising. I think if I was actually somehow incorporating and making something for the days that it rained I would have run out of that color first but that project is still going I have got into a habit of actually crocheting it just before I go to bed and um, so it's about 10 minutes I do it you know I keep it next to my bed before I go to sleep I put I crochet the day put it all away and it kind of keeps on going and I don't really feel like I have to do it for a very long time so um, yeah, I love making temperature blanket. I would actually probably, now I'm saying it, we're only in April at the moment. But if it keeps going this way, I really like the idea of making something um, that you can't really predict how it's gonna look at the end. Mm, and my final, final project 
uh, during Easter I have decided that I want to make something else with a crochet hook so I found a I'm a groomy pattern I'm making a little doll uh, which is a theme of Easter so I've got half of her body and her hands this has now stopped a little bit but I'm halfway there I'm sure I'm going to finish her um, I'm making her from uh, Sirdar Happy it's a DK weight, 100% uh, cotton, and I bought this whole box. I think in one of my videos I must have shown you, it was a big box and it had all the different colors. Um, and even though it looks like it's just a 20, a 20 gram ball, there's so much you can make out of them. So I've got so many of the colors, so I keep thinking that I just need to use it up. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to use it up, so I keep crocheting something with it so um that's another project which i started kind of one evening when i wasn't feeling like knitting i thought you know i scrolled through the patterns that i have i found this one and um it's kind of in a going at the moment now finally um purchases i was very proud of myself because i hardly have anything to show you and I don't feel like I bought anything for the sake of buying it. Um, the knitting needles, maybe. Um, but the rest of my purchases, um, the sparkly yarn, I, it was forced. I, ha I was forced to buy it because I ran out of it and I needed it to finish it. Like to carry on knitting. So um, the only other purchase I made, obviously, Lane. Um, so... I'm kind of forced now to buy two magazines a year from Lane to keep my <laughs> magazine collection going um, because it has taken me so long to actually collect it all that I feel like I just have to continue it. So this is spring 2024, the Lane magazine and I was so impressed with one of the patterns and I could just see it being made and worn on just you know a cotton dress summer evening maybe when you're on holiday um i love them so this is the actual jumper i hope you see it and i just love it so much i was never a fan of a knitting this uh, knitting and then letting go of the stitches but I think in this pattern it looks so beautiful and the coral coral I think is the color of 2024 it's very popular but yeah my favorite um, favorite pattern of this lane and uh, this lane also had a survey so lane was taking a survey that I actually managed to fill in as well and then they showed the results in this uh, in this issue it's what we knit now and it's for all the survey results which was very interesting to read and figure out what other knitters around the world likes so socks for example whether you would knit um, socks for example toe up or cuff down it also asked, for example, what are the five favorite items to knit, um, which needles you prefer, um, five favorite pattern styles, and uh, it did share uh, some of the actual responses that other people have written down. So I love Lane Lane magazine. I love I love just to read it. And um, I always feel like every month I receive, not every month, every time I receive it, it's just so interesting to read it. And um, it has some very good uh, recipes. So, rhubarb and strawberry compote. Look at that. Beautiful. So, that was it. That was my lane. And that was our podcast for March. Thank you so much. If you're still here, if you managed to watch all of my rambles, um, I'm going to finish the final bit of my coffee. 
and um, I'm going to wish you a beautiful month ahead, a beautiful month of April. I hope I'll see you here again next month and I hope to see myself here because at the moment my life is a bit unpredictable with our housework and I'm kind of living on the edge uh, where I wait for my husband to tell me well you have to pack everything again so <laughs> I don't want to promise anything um, I am actually more um, more of a frequent shower on Instagram so if you ever wonder where I disappeared from YouTube check out Instagram you'll most likely find me on there um, but I'm gonna go edit this video upload it for you to watch and um, I'm going to go do some knitting. Thank you for watching guys. I'll see you next month. Bye bye!